Uh, it was a tough one. It, it, in a way, it's kind of disappointing because uh, before the show started, I was talking to T.O., and I said I have no problem with losing, but the body language and sometimes the effort, uh, when you see that lack, it's it's very frustrating as a you know somebody who's watched Carolina since they've graduated. But tonight when I'm actually watching the game, I thought they had awful sh- uh, shot selection. And I've always said when this team shares the ball – and they're getting high assists. They can play with anybody. Uh, but it just looked like they were going to stand around the perimeter and just try to force feed the ball to Armando. And to me, I think they always play best when they move and push the ball and get Armando kind of in some natural movement to where he can seal or get some rebounds and putbacks. It was just it, – it just seemed like Miami had prepared to load up the paint for Armando, was just expecting uh, the ball to go inside. But – uh, this was a big one. It's a big loss for us because we have no quad one wins trying to make a playoff or a tournament resume. And uh, it was a chance for us to get a big one at home. It's very disappointing. You know, I, I think one thing we have to do is we have to create uh, credit Miami's game plan. I mean, what they did uh, off the ball in order to keep the ball out of uh, Armando's hands was really impressive. They really two passes away. They were in the paint. They had a guy in front and a guy behind. And the interesting one to me was they would bring guys off the bench and Jordan Miller would some guys sometimes get matched up. And I think what ended up happening was Miami preyed on the fact, and when I say prey, I mean P-R-E-Y, like they're a hawk. They were preying on the fact Mm -hmm. that North Carolina doesn't want to give the ball up quickly. They don't want to pop the ball. There, there was one possess, There was one possession uh, early in the second half. It was like finally somebody did. It was Leaky Black. He was on the left 45, the far corner. The help was all the way in. He skips it, and Armando, because he's getting fronted, he just continues his seal when that thing skipped, and they pop it right into him. He gets an easy bucket. The problem is Caleb and RJ aren't doing that. They're not willing to – pass it and make that skip pass quick without dribbling the air out of the ball first. So what happens, they load up to the ball side, they get frustrated that they can't give it to them themselves. And then what happens is, is everybody's loaded up and then they really struggle because then they're driving right into everybody else. So it's like, it comes to a point to where you are. we, We said this off the air too. You are what you consistently do right now. North Carolina's an NIT team. Mm-hmm. And this is a fir- this is a team that was ranked first in the country coming into the season, and deservedly so. They returned everybody except for Brady Manick from a Final Four team. Uh, they still have the talent there, but for some reason, there's glue on that ball when it comes to the guards, and they will not swing, swing. There are no Gretzky assists with this North Carolina team, and and. Tyler and Rob, you guys know what I'm talking about, but for me to elaborate, there's nobody who's willing to make the pass to get to the assist. Mm-hmm. They feel like they have to do it themselves. If they pass pass or they they skip pass and then Armando can seal and then they throw it directly in, he can get position. But you're, it, it's really hard to find spots if you're not willing to let that ball go. And Carolina, right now they're in an IT team. Yeah, and, and you bring up a good point as you talk about that seal. But to me, when I look at the stat, when you go five for 31 from the three, teams are just going to load the paint. They're going to let you shoot. And a big reason why we miss a lot of those threes is because of the shot selection. And you talked about just pounding the ball, pounding the ball. Uh, There is not a lot of good movement. Uh, The movement off the ball is pretty bad. If you actually look at the game, it looks just like guys are just standing around the three-point line. Uh, But And I've said this all along. There's more to the game than just scoring. You can impact Mm -hmm. the the game in different ways. You can get out uh, like the hockey assist you're talking about. We used to track that when I was with the Pacers. Uh, That's a big stat. And, uh, you know, being willing to make that pass, to make an extra pass, to lead somebody into an easy bucket, uh, that's important because when I watch the game and I'm always looking, we never get really easy buckets. Uh, And Mm -hmm. that's a big key. You know, getting easy layups, the highest percentage shot in basketball, uncontested layup, we don't get many of those. So let me ask you guys this. We've seen 
what North Carolina's ceiling can be, right? When they play their best, we know what they can do. They can go into Cameron and they can beat a number one seed Duke team by 13. They can make a run to the final four to the national championship game. They can play like the best team in college basketball. I don't think that it's crazy that they were ranked number one of the preseason. I think they have the talent to be that good. So uh, I'll start with uh, you on this one, T.O. One, is it possible to get back to that level? And two, how can Hubert Davis do this? Like, how can he fix what's wrong with this team right now? You, you know, you got to find a way for those guys to give it up early in the possession and then be like, hey, guys, like, I, I, I want to play fast. And Carolina's always played fast. And they've gone away from this Carolina break, and that's all well and good. Uh, but at the same time, like, Carolina, a lot of times they have a lot of talent. Like, get that ball up there have them attack some closeouts and push it. I, I just don't know that – I mean, what precedent have we had that says he's going to do that? That That's the thing that scares me. They can absolutely get to that point to where they're still playing at an elite level because the talent's there. It's just consistency has been a massive issue, and it's great to have tough shot makers. You guys know this. It's great to have Caleb Love, who's a tough shot maker. It's – when you need that tough shots at the end of games, when they're close, when you've been playing together the first 38 minutes, you need that tough shot in the last two minutes. Look at Duke in the final four last year. You need that big shot at the end of the game. You don't necessarily need a hero shot for the first 38 minutes. I, I agree with you, T.O. And for me, uh, one thing, I think Pete Nance is really struggling, and I don't think he's made a three, and he's probably one for 17 or something the last four or five games. Puff Johnson comes in off the bench, and he plays really hard. He seems to get uh, easy buckets. He makes winning plays. Uh, and that's a guy who I think could play more and maybe bring a little energy and uh, the team feed off of that. I really like Puff. I'm not saying bench uh, Pete. I think Pete can turn around. Um, but uh, I really like the way Puff comes in off the bench. And uh, I think having him play extended minutes or just kind of be somebody willing to make some of those blue collar plays, dive on the floor, get tough rebounds. Uh, I think that really is where it really starts uh, for me uh, because I think there's a lot more to scoring. And I think a lot of these guards, especially Caleb, maybe RJ are putting too much pressure on themselves to score big uh, and they're living and dying by how many points they have. I think if you just spread the ball, quit worrying about your points, easy buckets will come and then things will start opening up. You know who I right. who I like in that lineup who they who they put in for a few games and I thought like hey man this fits like Seth Trimble. I thought when he played with both RJ and Caleb Love like it added a ball mover. They don't necessarily have a ball mover and then they played Leaky Black at the 4 with Armando inside and then all of a sudden Trimble's taking a ball up the floor and he's bringing it with pace and he's willing to let it go and then those guys because that happened they feel like they're included they're willing to let it go and then the ball started moving some more. But when Pete Nance got back, it was like, well, we got to play him. We got to play him. He, he brings a lot of stuff. You know, maybe you could lighten the load on Armando and play Pete Nance at the five a little bit. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's worked. And Pete Nance has played at a place at Northwestern where they move the ball a little bit more. That's where he had success. This year, it's just, it doesn't fit right now. They need somebody to inject some energy by, by pushing the ball up and letting the ball go first. They don't have that right now. Yeah, and that's a good point because Jeff, uh, when we were on here last time, he talked about Carolina looked like they're playing AU ball a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but when you know, if you watch the Virginia game when they played at Virginia, and Armando went down, Jalen Washington came in and played unbelievable, uh, mm -hmm. and they gave Virginia they played with Virginia without Armando, and. Uh, they have some depth, whether, you know, they can get their confidence up enough to play him extended minutes. Uh, I don't know, but Seth does add a lot of energy. He gets out and he plays good defense. He gets steals. He makes things happen. Uh, so I, I don't know where they're going to go, but uh, the clock is definitely ticking for sure. They've got to get some quad one wins if they want to play in the tournament. 